In this video we're going to take a look at the mannequins that are inside of ZBrush and see how we can quickly pose these mannequins and turn them into some geometry that we can start sculpting on right away. Uh, we're going to turn that into a Dynamesh. So I'm just going to go ahead and cl click uh, Control N to clear my canvas and I've already got a mannequin loaded up. But let me go ahead and show you where those exist at. So if we hit the comma key that's going to bring up Lightbox or you can hit this icon here in the interface and you can see under projects if I go up you'll actually see something like this this is the default here if I click and drag right here it's going to zoom in this in and out and if I click and drag here it's going to move it left or right so you should see the Dynamesh, uh, the Dynawax and some of these other startup uh, files that they have there's a folder under project called mannequin so if we double click on that and load this up there's a bunch of different mannequins that are already made for you to uh, use and I've used this eight head man underscore Ryan underscore Kingsland so if you double click that um, it's gonna go ahead and load this and it's going to actually put this off the to the side here in the tool palette so I'm gonna click on that just click and drag and hit T to go into edit mode or you can click this icon right here so now I'm going to put this on the move uh, tool, the transpose tools, but um, when we're in this mode that we have here, which is basically like a Z skeleton or Z sphere skeleton, you can start to click and drag on these different pieces and move them around. Now if you click on this part, which you could consider like a bone, you can basically move this and rotate it all at the same time. So I can click and drag and move this around. So it's going to be real easy for you to just click these different pieces and come up with a come up with a pose. So I can take the legs here and move those. If I click on the actual circle parts, that's going to actually move those out. So I want some space in between there. I'm going to click and drag this here. And maybe I'll have this uh, kind of look like this character is flying in the air. So I can um, click and drag this and move this around here. And if I click and drag and move up, I can actually start to scale the size of the head. Now with these, I showed you how you can click and drag the bones around. If I click on the spheres here or the join ends, you can actually move these around and start to change uh, the proportions. So if I wanted this to feel as if it's some sort of winged type of character, then I can pull these out and start to play around with the proportions on this. So I'm not going to spend too much time trying to uh, make this uh, super interesting. I just want to kind of show you how you can play around with some of these things. And again, you can click and drag in here and you can do some really interesting uh, things with the pose by just moving this around or you can click and drag on the sphere here to kind of change uh, how how long this is. You can you could actually pull that thing out. I'm just going to hit undo on that. So how do you get this into something that you can actually start sculpting on? Let's go ahead and take a look over here at the adaptive skin under the tool section. So if you go to adaptive skin you can say preview and you can get a preview of the mesh that's going to be generated. And there's plenty of density in this uh, to turn this into a Dynamesh and start working on that. So you don't have to worry about this too much, but if there was a reason why you needed more geometry, you can pull this up and it'll make the surfaces even smoother for you. But I'll just leave it at one. And if you're happy with the shape that you've made, you can go ahead and say make adaptive skin. And at that point, you can see it's going to add a new object up into the tool palette. And it's actually going to be called skin underscore whatever the name was before. So let's go ahead and click on this new object that it generated for us. And now if I hit X I can turn on my symmetry and if I 
put on the move brush, you can actually start to sculpt on this, uh, this object. Let's take a look at the polyframe. So there's actually groups that are associated with this, um, polygroups, which is another nice thing. You can use this to your advantage if you want, or if you want this to become a one-piece model, we can go to geometry and really quickly, I'm going to turn down that blur, we can turn this into a DynaMesh. Now, if you want to keep your groups, make sure to turn the groups button on with DynaMesh, but if you want this to be a one-piece model with no separation on it, make sure groups is turned off, and then click on DynaMesh, and you can see that it's remeshed for us. And from here, we can just start to smooth the surface out. If I put it on my inflate brush, I can start to blow up some of these surfaces and make them kind of run into each other thicken up the legs just by uh, inflating. I can smooth out the kneecap area, maybe build up the calves a little bit more. But from here, it's just going to be a matter of you going through the sculptural process and kind of figuring out, you know, what exactly do you want to turn this into? It's just going to be a way that you can really quickly generate a shape that you can start sculpting on and not have to spend a lot of time uh, prepping to get a model to this point to where you can actually just start having some fun and start to sculpt on it. Now in the next section of the video we're going to take a look at what happens when you push uh, your model so far and you can no longer add any more resolution with DynaMesh. So we'll take a look at that. In this example, I've taken one of the mannequins and I've actually pushed it with DynaMesh as far as I can possibly go. So the resolution on this is cranked all the way up and uh, I'm able to get a fairly decent amount of um, detail on this model. So if you zoom in and take a look at the hands, you can see there's actually some veins running down the hand and it's um, pretty nice for this early stage to get your model to a certain point. Not and not have to worry about any kind of uh, topology or subdivision levels or anything like that. It's just more about the sculptural process. But you can see um, once you hit kind of a limit with what you're working with, um, it might be possible at that time to want to get your subdivision levels back and start working in a more traditional ZBrush manner. So how do you do that? So currently if we take a look at the polygons, you can see DynaMesh has given us a nice even distribution on the model um, and there's no subdivision levels on this model currently. So I'm going to go to Subtool and I'm going to take this model and I'm going to duplicate it. And this is right here. So go ahead and click the duplicate button and it's going to make an exact copy of this here. Um, I can turn on Solo. You can it doesn't matter which one you pick because they're exactly the same so pick one of the two and click on solo and it's going to hide everything except for whatever model you have selected here in the subtool area now what I'm going to do is go down to geometry and I'm going to use DynaMesh again but at this time I'm going to drop the model down to say like 256 around there and turn that back on and it seems to me that DynaMesh wants to know that there's some sort of change in the model. So if, we, if I put on the move brush and just kind of wiggle on the surface a little bit and then remesh, you can see it's going to build a lower res version of that model for me. Now the thing that I want to pay attention to is I've got these fingers and they're kind of thin. If I drop this down too low, then the fingers start to kind of disappear and there's not enough geometry for it. So I'm going to just go ahead and leave it at where it's at right now. This is uh, what I would consider my lowest resolution for the subdivision levels that I'm going to be adding. So I can go ahead and now click Solo again and I can see both my models together. So how do we get the detail from the nice smooth model onto this uh, rougher model that we have? 
So if I hide this here, I'm going to hide everything except for the low res cage. And I'm going to hit Control D to add a subdivision level. And that actually sits here under geometry. You can uh, hit the divide button there and that'll actually add a subdivision level. So now I've got one subdivision level to work with. Uh, I should have a slider that I can go back and forth between the two. Now I'm going to want to project the detail from this model onto this model. So I'm going to unhide that with this here so you can see the two. And now I'm going to go under the subtool section and go to project all and click that. And it should go through and actually project the uh, the new model I have with sub subdivisions on it. It's going to take that level and project it onto the model. Now it might not look like it's an exact fit right now, but if I do solo, you can see it. It's getting uh, pretty close to that shape. So I'm going to click off solo again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it another division level. So I'll hit divide, or you can hit Control D, either one. So I've got a new subdivision level here. And I'll go ahead and hit the Project All button again. And this is going to take some time. Obviously, the more geometry that you have, the longer that this projection is going to take. Um, but you want to make sure that you have enough geometry to capture all the detail that you had in your model previously. Uh, before you started adding the subdivision levels. So I just paused the video real quick and let it uh, keep running. It actually just took maybe uh, about 30 seconds after I paused the video. So, um, you know, you're going to have to kind of get a feel for how long this process is going to take from projecting one model into another. So if I hide the top one, here's our new model that we have. Um, and we have three subdivision levels on this model. And if we look at the polygon count, um, you just hover our cursor over the top here. So we're close to two million polygons right now. Um, I can easily hit Control D and add another subdivision level. And now at this point, I've got plenty of, plenty of geometry to start working with. But once I get to this stage, I really don't need the um, the Dynamesh model anymore, so I can go ahead and select it, and I can go ahead and hit delete in the subtool palette, and hit OK, and now that model's blown away, and now I have my new model with subdivision levels that I can start working with, and this will help you. If you want to further pose the model, you can drop it down to the lowest subdivision level and work with it at that resolution. Um, and then pose it and then put your slider back up for your geometry to get the higher res details. So we've, um, we've let ZBrush make a new model for us that we can get some subdivision levels with. We've used the best components of using the mannequin um, in conjunction with Dynamesh and used all the abilities from Dynamesh and pushed that as far as we possibly could. Then we had ZBrush generate new geometry for us and then project uh, the old model onto this new model. Now this is not good topology by any stretch of the imagination, but this is going to get you to a point where you can um, start to work with subdivision levels and you can really push the model. We can bring back the other pieces here. And I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to load up a final version of this model after I've pushed it uh, pretty far. So here's the model um, that started off as a mannequin and was pushed over to the Dynamesh and uh, I built, rebuilt the subdivision levels just like we took a look at. And then it was just a matter of me spending some time with the model and really trying to push and pull the shapes to get something interesting and maybe build up even finer detail uh, like the texture on the skin. Now this model, if I really wanted to use it for something, it would be a matter of me uh, resurfacing the model and then capturing all this detail, just like the same process that we took a look at from projecting from one model to another, 
I would have to project all this detail onto some really clean and good topology that could be used for animation or other purposes. Or if I just wanted to make sure that I had um, a texture layout in conjunction with UVs and clean topology, it'd be a matter of me just uh, cleaning that up and projecting from one model to another. And I actually went through and, you know, added a different shader to this guy and changed the background and set up some of the best possible render settings so I could get a nice little render out of this as well. And there will be another video where we take a look at the uh, best possible render. I won't go too deep into that, but I'll just kind of show some different options for setting things up so you can get... Um, a nice, a nice little render outside of ZBrush.